started drawing them and posting them and they got a big kick out of it. And it was making me laugh and you know, it was, it was just hilarious because they were so bad and it was just a lot of fun. So, you know, I was like, hey, you know, let's, let's create an account for this. People can send me the requests, I'll draw them and post them. And it just kind of took off from there. It was <laughs> not intended or expected, but it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> Alright everybody, welcome back. Welcome back to the Backyard Variety Tour. What's up Yardies? Thank you for being here. Now football's over. And I was thinking to myself, well, what are we gonna do now that football's over? Um, yeah, so today's guest, we got a hockey themed episode, hockey inspired episode, everybody. Football just finished, so we're on to the hockey now. As you can see, I got my Dallas Stars jersey on, I got my Dallas Stars mug. It's a hockey themed Ranton and Raven, hockey themed guest, and I somehow they ended up in my feed, I think. I liked one of their things, we just chatted something. We came together through a mutual love of following the Dallas Stars, and that's gonna be kind of the theme of today's episode. Um, I don't even know my guest's name, so that's gonna be a new one for us, having someone on who we really have no idea who they are. We're just gonna have a chat, so that's gonna be nice and exciting. Different. Something new here at the Backyard Variety Tour. Something new at the Backyard Variety Tour. Um, yeah, so we literally just met on social media the other day, so I think it's gonna be a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Yeah, so drawn terribly on Twitter and terribly drawn things on Instagram. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the reason I like the drawing so much is because we're living in such, in a world that demands such perfection right now. They demand such perfection and this is labeling itself as terribly drawn things or drawn terribly. So I like that preface. Um, it's kind of like my half-assed joke segment. Um, you're basically saying don't expect much and then I think they turn out a lot better than people expect. Or, um, as you can see, like I'll, I'll throw up some of the drawings, and they're very cute. You know, they're, they've got a certain cadence to them, a certain quality that, that's really nice and, and brings out a lot of fun into it. So we'll get into all that, but I just wanted to say that that's how Terribly Drawn Things and I came together. A mutual love of the Dallas Stars and kind of finding each other through social media. And I actually sent, um, they take requests, and I actually sent a Medano in to get done. Um, so that was a lot of fun, and I'll show you that. Okay. So we're going to get into terribly drawn things in a little bit. And as always, we're sponsored by Broken Stick. This episode is sponsored by Broken Stick. Thanks to Broken Stick, I'm drinking myself some Hazer Beam. You can see it in the corner there beside that grizzly skull. Some hints of tropical fruit in the Hazer Beam, I believe. I believe that's what I'm sensing. Sensei. Shipping's Ontario wide. Why wouldn't you? And make sure you order online, folks. It's easy. It doesn't cost that much. Why not support somebody who's making the beer themselves? You know they're making it themselves and sending it out. Go for it. Why buy if it ain't broken? <laughs> Show me the fan who was on the fence about hockey to need the addition of cheerleaders to push them over the edge. <laughs> but let's get into Ranton and Raven right now. Ranton and Raven. Okay, a couple things. We're gonna talk about the Hart Trophy. We're gonna get into that in just a second because something came up where I heard that Wayne Gretzky won the Hart Trophy nine times and eight of them were consecutive. And I was like, Poof. So yeah, we gotta talk about that a little bit. Just dive in a little bit deeper on that and find out what's going on there. Okay, now we're gonna get into the Hart Trophy. I don't really know what I did here. I just wanna break some things down for you. So Wayne Gretzky obviously won it the most times. And I was just kinda of thinking like, who else kinda of won it a lot? Or let's kinda of see what happens with the Hart Trophy throughout the year. So, to start off as some guy, and he's a center way back in the day named Howie Morenz. Howie Morenz. And he won three Hart Trophies over the course of five years with one back to back. And that was during 1927 to 1932, a span of five years. He won three with one back to back. Next notable is Eddie Shore. We've heard of Eddie Shore, old time hockey. Eddie Shore is a defenseman, a defenseman to win the Hart Trophy. And he won four over the course of six years. And he also won a back-to-back. -back. And that was from 1932 to 1938, span of six years. Eddie Shore won four Hart Trophies. Then we get to right-wing Gordie Howe. 
Over the span of 12 years, Gordie Howe won six Hart trophies. He had a back-to-back. -back. He had two back-to-backs. And that was over a span of 1951 to 1963. 12 years, he won six Hart trophies with two separate back-to-backs. After that is defenseman Bobby Orr. Three in a row. Interesting. Notable. Three in a row from 69 to 72. That's kind of interesting. Everyone else just kind of had back-to-backs or they were split up. So he managed to do three in a row as a defenseman from 69 to 72. Three years, three in a row. Bobby Orr. Center Bobby Clark. He won three in four years from 72 to 76. And then we get to center Wayne Gretzky. Nine total, eight consecutive from the course of 1979 to 1987. It was all with the Oilers. And then he won, that was eight of them with the Oilers in a row. And then he won, he won again once more in 88 and 89. So eight consecutive from 79 to 87, all with the Oilers, and then once more in 88, 89. Here's a notable honorable mention, Joe Thornton, center Joe Thornton, still part of the modern day era, still playing, playing for the Leafs right now, or well injured, but uh, on the team. Center Joe Thornton is the only player to play for two teams while winning the Hart Trophy. He was playing for Boston and then traded to San Jose in the 05-06 season. And he won the Hart Trophy this year. So imagine that, the best player in the league getting traded and winning the Hart Trophy. Sidney Crosby, two Hart Trophies. Alexander Ovechkin, three Hart Trophies. And it just seems that in the modern era, all the players are so good. Um, you know, there's everyone's so good. No one's ever gonna win eight in a row again. Gordie Howe seems like Gordie Howe came the closest six in twelve years. You know, that's pretty huge. So um, yeah, that's uh, you know that's the Hart Trophy. Just wanted to go through that. I thought it was kind of interesting. Get a little bit of background there, and that's all for Rant and Raven. Okay, stay tuned for our next guest, Terribly Drawn Things, Drawn Terribly on your social medias, Terribly Drawn Things, and Drawn Terribly on your social medias. And stay tuned for after the fact, you'll see Papa Roach. Papa Roach will be here. Wow, I can't believe we got Papa Roach. Okay, awesome. Um, okay, so Sarah, thank you so much for being here. My guest, Sarah, and um, you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, is that correct? Yes. Correct, yeah. I'm here in, uh, in Fort Worth. I think we must have been following like-minded, obviously the Dallas Stars are following a like-minded person. And I think your tweet popped up one day and I liked it and I just kind of fell in love with them right away, these drawings. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's so, awesome. I'm like, glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really, I think they're cute. I think they're poignant. We'll get into all that. But um, basically it's uh, on Twitter. I think it's drawn terribly. It's drawn on Twitter. terribly, yeah. Drawn and then terribly I think on, on uh, and then uh, terribly drawn things on Instagram. Yes, yeah, that sounds right. So basically what they are is they're cartoon drawings of um, mostly Dallas Stars members, but you have different options on there. I've seen a couple mm -hmm. of Canadian teams. You accept um, requests from people. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, I'm going to throw up some photos because I have friends who are fans of the Canucks. So that Holtby one is so great. I love the <laughs> Anton Hudobin one. My friend, uh, you know, my friends know I'm a big Dallas Stars fan. And my one friend sent me the Anton Hudobin one with the shirt off and the wings as a joke a long time ago, not the cartoon version. And then once I <laughs> yeah. saw your cartoon version, I was like, this is great. So they're a lot yeah, of fun. Uh, how, how, did, how did the idea start? So I, um, I mean, since I was a kid, I've loved to just doodle and draw. Um, but I was never good at it. <laughs> and so for many years, I would get very frustrated with that and just, you know, give up and, you know, cause I have very many like talented, very talented friends. And so I'm like, you know what, this is frustrating. Like I'm not drawing anymore. And then here recently I was like, Hey, I'm going to buy an Apple pencil. Cause I have an iPad and I just want to doodle. Like I need something to kill time, you know, when I have some free time and after work just to relax and I don't care what it looks like. I'm just going to draw it. And so I got on my personal uh, Twitter and, you know, told my friends, it's like, hey, give me some ideas of things to draw terribly for you guys. Like just, you know, off the bat, like I wasn't even 
planning on having any sort of account or doing this for, you know, many different reasons. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you know, some of my friends sent me pictures of Jamie Ben and, you know, Dobie and just whoever else they could think of. And I started drawing them and posting them and they got a big kick out of it. And it was making me laugh. And, you know, it was, it was just hilarious because they were so bad and it was just a lot of fun. So, you know, I was like, Hey, you know, let's, let's create an account for this. People can send me the requests. I'll draw them and post them. And it just kind of took off from there. It was uh, not intended or expected, but it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> you said so you're drawing on an Apple pencil with the iPad. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. that it? Yeah, okay, yeah that's cool. it. Just in the notes app on my iPad. <laughs> and about how long does like a single drawing take? Uh, you know, I actually kind of timed it the other day. It was, I did, I think I usually get a drawing done in about 20 to 30 minutes. It just kind of depends on how much, uh, how big of a drawing it is or, you know, mm -hmm. how much detail there's going to be or something like that. Uh, but I tend to try and get five to seven drawings done a night um oh, some of wow. them might get done a little faster yeah it's it's crazy I'll just sit here and start drawing and before I know it it's midnight and I'm like oh I should probably <laughs> go to bed <laughs> well see that's how you know you love something you know you're passionate yeah. about it so it's, time's it's flying by fun. the amount of followers between Instagram and Twitter is different. You have like 500 oh, yeah. followers on Twitter and then you have 50 yeah. followers on Instagram. I'm like, what's going on here? And it just goes to show that like the same people who are following on one thing, maybe strictly only use that app and don't yeah. follow on both things. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, yeah. Cause I post the same stuff between the two. Um, I noticed that it's funny that you mentioned it. Cause I did notice that the other day that, you know, once something happens on Twitter, it, spread so fast yeah. so quickly and it's so easy right. to just you know retweet stuff and you know easily promote other things that you like uh on instagram it's it's more restricted um you know you might show up in somebody's explore page but if somebody doesn't check out their explore page they're not going to see your stuff unless somebody you know specifically you know sends your page to somebody else or they you know post one of your drawings and their stories or something like that it's it's a lot more restricted on instagram but you know i'm having a blast with with twitter right now so yeah i think it's going to take off even further especially if you decide to expand or keep taking requests i was thinking about the business model eventually you're gonna to have to start a patreon or something because you're gonna start getting <laughs> so many requests that you're not gonna yeah. be able to keep up especially if this gets to canada which is partially why i want to do it get some canadian people on board I so after I did that first I think it was the first the Connor McDavid one where he's making that crazy face uh I got an up, influx yeah, yeah I had an <laughs> influx of Canadian followers because at first it was very local a lot of Dallas Stars fans following me and like some of their mm -hmm. friends and uh and then after I did the Connor McDavid one it just I mean within that week I had 100 new followers and they were all like Canadian based team you know oh. fans so it's it has really taken off i think within the past week and a half i've gotten another like 250 new followers yeah it's, <laughs> it's a lot crazy. of fun yeah. i keep checking out because i'm expecting it to climb i'm expecting it to take a massive jump at some point so it's it's crazy yeah it's, it's canadians really love our we love our hockey you know so <laughs> yeah spitting chicklets spitting chicklets is the number one podcast all the time on yeah. apple like if you do hockey content here i think you're in a good zone so uh, <laughs> i wanted to just because i like the drawings so much and everything i felt that like more people needed to see them and i not like i have a huge fan base but anything i can do to tell my canadian friends and yeah. hopefully they share it and like it and hopefully it can spread and get bigger because i think they're really cute i think they're a lot of fun and they just bring well, a lot of you. like joy you know yeah absolutely and yeah that's what so many people have told me they've dm me or tagged me and stuff and just you know thank you for making me laugh i needed this it's this is a fun little thing that you know we have going on right now with everything else in the world is crazy and it's, they just wanted something good to laugh at and that makes me happy that you know i'm spreading joy to everyone else yeah and have you had like much love anything from the dallas stars or the organization or any players or anything has there been any love um, there yeah. yet i don't think any if they've seen it <laughs> i i'm not sure nobody has said otherwise um, well they will soon so i'm sure maybe something has been seen at this point which is kind of embarrassing because <laughs> you know 
uh it's terrible and hilarious but it, it it's funny to me so we'll see i guess we'll find out one day if they've seen my terrible drawings of them <laughs> no they will soon i have a feeling things are going to keep growing for yeah. you like you said you i just checked uh not a second ago and you're up to 450 something followers or whatever oh, so wow you know so you grow <laughs> yeah you're growing you're growing nicely so and every day too. And the more people hear about yeah. it and the more you start doing more teams and more people and more things. And that's one thing I went back, I went on your Instagram and uh, I went to the very first photo and it's actually Jamie Ben scoring, but it, it, it kind of reminds me of the cadence of when Patrick Stefan missed that open net. Do you remember that? Oh my God. That <laughs> yes. would be, I think that it would is. be a fun yeah. one to draw, <laughs> kind of show him like falling. <laughs> <laughs> If you request it, I'll draw it. <laughs> yeah, I sent in a request to you because I, I like it so much. And Medano's my favorite player. That's that's the jersey yeah. I'm wearing. So yeah, uh, and you, you drew me a Medano back, and it was a lot of fun. And um, I want to get that. <laughs> I want to get that framed actually, and I want to put it on my desk here for the show, like a little desk frame. I want to oh, have yeah, it. Oh yeah, that'd be awesome. I yeah. I would like that. <laughs> so how often do you make it to Dallas Stars games? Is that a thing? So, oh yeah, so. This is actually the first season where I am not attending any games uh, just to be on the safe side, you know, trying to make sure I keep me and my daughter and my family safe and healthy. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of heartbreaking because we go every season. I think the past five seasons I've been a partial plan holder. So we make it to at least 10 games, um, sometimes more because nice. we'll have friends that will give us tickets and things like that. Um, so this is the first season where we weren't at opening night. Um, and we don't have any plans right now to go to any games. So that's been kind of rough. Um, but, but yeah, we, the, what about were, the winter classic? We were that there. Was, oh, you were there. We were eh? there. Nice. <laughs> yes. Oh, absolutely. so much fun. I would not have missed that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was amazing. The atmosphere was incredible. That was absolutely one of the, my best days of my entire life. So that was great. Yeah. Wow. So much fun. I don't get to talk to too many <laughs> stars fans, you know, so all yeah, I get is, I is <laughs> keeping up on things on, on Twitter or whatever. So, cause everybody here is a Leafs fan. So. Yeah. I mean, there's, it's growing every day, especially after the past couple of seasons, you know, our, our playoff run, especially you know last season, making it to the last final. It was so much fun. It, oh, it was crazy. So I, I'm seeing more and more Stars fans pop up here and, you know, like on Twitter, of course, there's just tons of us from all over the the world really i've seen people from australia that are stars fans and it's wild it's it's awesome That's watching cool. it grow well they hooked me all the way back in like 1996 when they used to play the oilers those were my favorite yeah those that's kind of when i got hooked it was like 96 97 and when they were kind of top of the league on their way to the their For cup sure. there yeah that my so i get a lot of questions you know i'm a native texan uh so i've lived here 36 years you know since the day I was born and everybody's like how did you get into hockey like well, how is that a thing because apparently you can only be from the north and get into hockey on your own <laughs> uh so yeah I the first game I ever watched my sister had the the game on when the, the night they won the cup and I was hooked from that the next season I dove deep and started learning everything I could about the game the players their stats and it just kind of took off from there. And now, you know, my daughter, she's 11 and she plays hockey and she loves the, the stars as much as I do. So it's That's a lot awesome. of fun. Yeah. I got hooked because essentially all my favorite players at the time, like I was a huge El Ed Belfort fan when he played for Chicago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I was a huge Neuendijk fan uh, when he played oh, for man. Calgary. And I was a huge Brett Hall fan when he played for St. Louis. And mm -hmm. I was a huge Medano fan just in, on his own right. And then when they all came right. together, I was like, oh my God, this is my super team. How can I, <laughs> yeah, how can they not be right my there. favorite team? Yeah, so Absolutely. ever since then, that was it. Yeah, uh, I had the pleasure of meeting some of those guys and my daughters actually got to meet them and they're, they're all great. I, you know, essentially grew up watching them. I was, you know, 15, I think when they won the cup. So that was, you know, half over half of my life now I've been you know a huge fan of them and they're they're a big part of who I am I've got stars stuff all over my room I would show you but my room's kind of messy right now <laughs> no me too I got I got my Dallas Stars mug here too nice I've had for years and years. why is it important to you or how are you okay with putting your terrible drawings out there because a lot of people we live in a world of such like that demands such perfection you know right so um how are you okay 
with that. I mean, I've just gotten to a point in my life where I'm like, you know what? Screw it. If it's, if it's good, it's good. If it's not, whatever. Like I'm just doing it for myself. Uh, you know, originally it was for myself just to make myself laugh. And then, you know, it made other people laugh and they were having fun with it and wanted to see more. So I was, I was okay with it. You know, you want to see my terrible drawings? Let's do it. <laughs> I'll do whatever you want. <laughs> no, it's a great thing because you're putting yourself out there to be judged. Yes, you're prefacing it with their, hey, they're mm -hmm. terrible drawings. Like, what do you expect? But exactly. there's still there's still a strength in that, in the personality, like in, in comedians or anything, anybody mm -hmm. who wants to do that kind of thing of putting yourself out there, even though something may not be good for a laugh or be, or whatever, you know? So Yeah, absolutely. And I've, you know, growing up, I've always loved making people laugh, trying to be funny, trying to do whatever I can to make others happy. And this is a new way to do it, I guess. And um, how many people do you think spend working. like 15, 20 photos taking to post one selfie? Oh no, that angle's not right. That angle's not right. That's, <laughs> we live in this world of yeah. perfection. Like everyone demands perfection and needs to be flawless. So that's what kind of caught my eye about the drawings. That's why I think they're special, really. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I, there's, you know, a couple where I'm like, oh, that's terrible. And I'm like, wait, it's supposed to be terrible. It's not supposed to be perfect. It's, it's, it, it's, yeah. it adds to the charm of it. <laughs> it's, it's very charming. So, very charming. What do you think of the Dallas Stars, <laughs> um, their new jerseys that they, what are they, the reverse retro and and the blackout? I yeah, love the blackout. The blackout. I love the blackout have... too. The neon green. <laughs> Yes, it's they're great. They look fantastic. They look great out on the ice. The guys yeah. look super cool in them. Uh, they do. I have a Rope Hints one in my closet right nice. now, looking at me. <laughs> um, the reverse retro is pretty cool. I like it. I don't know if I'm going to get one yet. It looks. Is nice that the plain person. white? Yeah, it's it's very white and it's got um, I think a little bit of silver and some of the green right. in there tossed in a little bit. Not my favorite, but yeah, know, it's my least favorite of the cool. bunch. I but like it, it, it looks it looks kind of yeah. sleek. Yeah, I like it. I, it's not bad. So. I think I heard the breakdown that they're wearing their regular stuff a lot. Then they're wearing the reverse uh, retro only maybe three times and the blackout I ten think so. times or something yeah. like that. So Yeah, something crazy. I know they were definitely wearing the blackout um, more than the reverse retro, which is fine by me. I, I like it. I think they look really cool in them. And getting back to last year a little bit, wasn't it such an epic year where... We had the Winter Classic. We also get the the video that comes along with the Winter Classic, the four episodes yes. there of behind the scenes, which I yes. never thought I was going to get in my life. I always thought it was always right. going to be <laughs> always going to be Boston, whatever. So that was amazing. Mm -hmm. And then we also make it to the Stanley Cup. If we could have won, that would have just oh, been man. the most. I kind of thought we were going to win because I was like, this year is Me too. crazy. <laughs> yeah, like, everything's so just crazy. going right. It was so crazy. It seemed like we were just destined to win, but we were two games short. So yeah, we'll get so there close. again. <laughs> for sure. For sure. I had a really good feeling last year mm -hmm. and I just kind of kept it to myself, but like I knew where the team was at. Yeah. You know? I'm the, I'm the same way. Like I get that gut instinct and that feeling about it. And when it keeps getting better and better and they get closer and closer to that, I'm just like, yes, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> and then something else happens and there it goes. <laughs> and how much, um, how much actually I sent you, cause I sent you the Brendan Morrow drawing about the quadruple OT oh, yeah, um, that's right. or that I, photo. I so that one. Yeah. I was kind of, I don't know if I was a kid or, or 20 or I can't remember exactly, but um I remember being in, in my basement to my parents' house back home and, mm -hmm. and it was, you know, three or 4 a.m. or something like that. And yeah. when they scored, I was just fist pumping in the basement, <laughs> you know, and like cheering and, but still trying to be as quiet as possible to not wake exactly. anybody. But I, I was jumping around, like that was just a moment for the ages. And then actually oh, sure. I met him, I met him that summer because he was in Marty Turco's from my hometown. So oh, nice. Um, Marty Turco used to hold a golf tournament and he brought a bunch of Dallas stars there. And me and my friends were just drinking in a bar called the Canadian at the time. And they come strolling in. And one nice. of my friends, one of my friends was, uh, his cousin was hanging out with them and he kind of hooked up the intro and I had a little Dallas. Uh, I felt like a six year old kid, even though I was in a bar <laughs> drinking. Cause they were like, Hey, you want to go say hi to Brendan Morrow? And like, so we got up, me and my friends went and I was like, 
here's my, I'm a Dallas Stars fan. Here's my Dallas Stars keychain, <laughs> sir. <laughs> to prove to him that I was a star. I was like, there's my keychain. I was like, yeah, okay, bud. Good work. <laughs> no, he was really nice. He was really yeah, they're, nice. They're they were all class acts. wonderful guys. Yeah, they're, I've met them a handful of times, you know, in growing up and everything. And here recently, they're, they're great guys. They're always super nice and friendly and so welcoming and always happy to meet people. So yeah, that, that sounds like them. <laughs> Couple of good Canadian boys. Absolutely. So we were talking about, uh, I just want to let people know you do take requests. Um, mm -hmm. You do do okay. Canadian teams. I'm going to show the Hopi. I'm going to show some to Chuck. I'm going to show the McDavid. Yeah. Um, you even did some political things. You did a little Bernie Sanders. And, yeah. you did, uh, <laughs> and then you did kind of a meme thing, like a sloth. And that's where I also think it's going to expand and blow up for you. Because if mm -hmm. you're just taking things that are popular in pop culture, whatever, people are going to love that stuff. They're going to eat it. Oh, up. for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm welcome to take just about anything. If you, know, you send it to me, you send a picture, I'll, I'll put it in my queue and draw it whenever I can. Of course, you know, I'm a mom and so I'm working also <laughs> so yeah. it, you know evenings is when I sit down and pop out a couple of drawings and post them and that's when it just it takes off and I get more requests and everything it's it's wild oh yeah have you thought about the patreon thing at all like do you, I think you're eventually going to get into it have you thought about it? has it even crossed your mind I, it hasn't crossed my mind I have been told uh, by a few people that like hey you're gonna have to like start limiting some of your requests because it's gonna you're gonna start getting too many and you're not gonna be able to do them all mm -hmm. so i haven't really thought about the whole patreon thing i've honestly never looked into it um a couple of my my twitter pals uh suggested i start or a, a shop. Red bubble shop yeah exactly so, yeah, yeah a shop or something i don't know if maybe patreon's just for videos i'm not i'm still learning this stuff too I'm, but uh, yeah i'm honestly not sure i know nothing about patreon i just see it <laughs> uh, but i do have a red bubble shop uh, I have it linked into my both of my bios. So um, on Twitter, are there prints? Can people get prints there? Yeah. So you can. I think I have most of them set up to where you can do like stickers or um, like little art art prints. Because I've personally ordered some some stuff uh, from there from different you know different artists, um, and so they have like little art boards. Um, their stickers i think i opened up some to you could have it done on a t-shirt if you'd like or phone, a phone cases case. the phone case was really cool i saw that rue pence yes. one that was great yeah yeah so there's phone cases um i don't have everything uh, especially if you get that uh, connor mcdavid one on a phone case Those are gonna <laughs> sell like hotcakes yes absolutely uh so yeah i've made a i think one sale so far i opened my shop earlier this week I think it is um of course it takes some time to get the artwork approved and uh once it's approved it's up on the shop so anybody can take a look and buy something if they want it's it's pretty fun <laughs> I just want to jump into a little segment we call TNT which is topics not trending not single but uh <laughs> and, and not a triple not a single, not a triple. Oh, What's in between? Dub a double? Yeah. So that's Yay. the first word. <laughs> that's the first word. Okay. Right. And then the second word is um, the wooden T in religion. What would you call that? Cross. It's double cross. Hey. Boom. Double cross. You got it. <laughs> so what do we know about a double cross? What can you tell me? What comes um, to your mind when you hear double cross? When I hear double cross, I think of somebody, you know, stabbing you in the, in the back, double crossing you. That's what I know. That's right. That's where my it, mind goes. <laughs> it reminds me of wrestling to an extent, something like that. Like oh, there'd always okay. be, there'd always be two guys and they'd be on a tag team together. And then halfway through the match, one of the guys who was on the same team turned his back and he betrayed the other guy. It's a big ah. wrestling thing. It happens in wrestling all the time. There, there or you go. If, <laughs> if, it, if hockey turned into like how crazy social media and everything gets nowadays, you'd have like yeah. Jamie Benn, say Jamie Benn was gonna do a double cross. He'd be going down on, uh, or no, it, it'd work better if it was like Klingberg, the last defenseman back. So Klingberg's the go. last defenseman back with an empty net and, and the stars are trying to uh, get that game time goal. But all of a sudden <laughs> Klingberg turns to the stars net and he takes off his jersey, and all of a sudden he's wearing a Nashville jersey. And you're like, what? No, Klingberg! And he throws it into our empty net. 
That's a double cross. Ah, uh, yeah. We, we don't want that. We've had some of our own uh, our own goals, and that's not very fun. <laughs> Next one is also two words. It's a movie okay. with um, it's a movie with uh, Mr. Bean and a bunch of other people, and they're all traveling around the world trying to get money, I believe. Uh, a big okay. bag of money. Um, it's also the Florida Panthers, what they used to throw on the ice back in the day in the 90s. They're, do you remember oh, that? God, what did they throw on the ice? No, I don't. Uh... It's it's also the uh, the animal that'll do anything to survive that kind of looks like this. Like a mole? <laughs> um, kind of like a mouse, more like a mouse, but dirtier. Not as cute. Oh God! The Albany uh, River. The Albany River. Rat. A yeah. rat. <laughs> That's the first word. That's the okay. first word. All right. And then the second word. Um, second word is uh, where a bunch of fast cars drive around a track mm -hmm. uh, for to beat a time. So if they're all trying to beat a time, they're in a a race. Yeah, so put rat the two race. together. There it is, rat race. <laughs> so what comes to yeah. your mind? What's what comes to your mind for rat race? Uh, you know, corporate stuff, the rat race, you know, mm, working. Corporate stuff. Yeah. Yeah, no. Not fun. No bueno. <laughs> <laughs>
they're usually like around like 30 bucks for the upper level um it, it, you know it's it's it ranges and sometimes you're paying a lot more than you thought you would if you're buying them last minute if you want to get a you know really good spot um yeah they're they're crazy their prices range that's why I try and keep with my partial plan because I know my tickets are done and paid for and I don't have to worry about it <laughs> um but yeah and I you know get a little bit of a discount because I am you know the partial plan holder so um it's it's nice. I, I like it. I like the, the prices aren't too bad. Um, That's unless good. you're wanting to sit, you know, right behind the glass or something like that, which I have yet to do. Um, so one of these days I will get there. Well, once uh, drawn terribly blows up, you'll have uh, plenty of, they'll probably be putting you in a, they'll be putting you in a box or something like that. Oh, that'd week. be nice. I'll, yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. The Super Bowl is tomorrow. Do you have any plans and anything you're doing? I did not know that it was the Super Bowl tomorrow. <laughs> oh, oh, so you're just a big um, hockey fan. I'm just a hockey fan. That's it. I nice. honestly don't follow any of the of other sports. Um, I know, you know, of course the Cowboys are here. My dad and sister grew up, you know, I've been, growing up, I always had the games on because they were watching it. And um, of course, you know, we share a home with the Mavs. I know that, <laughs> uh, but no, I, I, hockey is everything to me. So that's, that's all I know is the wonderful nice. sport of hockey. So, well, you know what I watched today to pump myself up since it was a hockey themed episode and we were going to be talking stars. I watched nothing else matters. The hour long uh, video, of the stars winning the cup. You see, I that? have it. I have it on VHS. <laughs> it's sitting right over here on my bookshelf. I have uh, it. I've watched great. it so many times. I don't have a VHS player anymore, but I have yeah. it. And and now, of course, it's like on YouTube. So whenever yeah. I get a hankering to watch it, I'll I'll you know put it on the TV and stream it. And I cry every time I watch it because <laughs> oh, it it's amazing. So happy. I love it. You know, you know, what's one thing that I didn't really recall that it showed um, is that Hasek and Belfour had so much history because Hasek was the backup for yeah. Belfour in Chicago. That mm -hmm. I knew that, but it kind of slipped my mind and just mm -hmm. the history between them. And man, Hasek was on top of his game then too, but you know, so was Eddie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Eddie's better, that's what you say. This was great. This was so much fun. Sarah, thank you for doing this. There's one little yeah, thing we absolutely. do, another, another little segment before we go here All and right. I call it the gauntlet. <laughs> oh boy. And basically, the gauntlet is uh, just questions. There's no right or wrong answer. So it's just right. however however you um, see the world. So, right. Sarah, Sounds where good. does the time go? Um, it, it just goes. It's gone and it's done and over with. It's in the past. <laughs> What's the most useful thing you own? Uh, uh, my air fryer. I love that thing. What animal do you think would be your spirit animal? Uh, dogs, because I love dogs. What noise do you hate? Uh, people grinding their teeth. What does the world need most? Um, compassion. And what sound does an engine make? <laughs> um, I don't. Boom. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Got a little Thank sound you very much. <laughs> Thank welcome. you very much. Just stick around here for a second, Sarah, after okay. I sign off. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. This is Sarah from Drawn Terribly, Things Drawn Terribly. Can't thank her enough for being here. It was a lot of fun uh, talking shop, talking stars, talking social media. So um, hope you enjoyed the episode, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.